Well, hey everyone. I'm so excited to introduce you to my friend Stacia. Stacia, hey. Hello. <laughs> Welcome to Becoming Me. TV. And y'all, I've had the privilege of talking with Stacia on the opposite end. She actually interviewed me at the Everything Church podcast. So fun. So now we've reversed roles and I get to interview you, which will be yes. fun. Um, but I've been so encouraged by Stacia's story, by who she is and who she's becoming. So I'm just thrilled to be able to introduce her um, to y'all today. So Stacia, who is Stacia? That is a great question. Stacia is complicated. <laughs> I can say that for sure. Actually, well, I'll just tell you a little bit about who I am in the most basic um, form. So I'm obviously a girl. Um, I'm a girl that is just drowning in men. I have a husband and two little boys um, that are five and three that are like, <clears throat> either going to end up in jail or change the world. It's, it's very, it's still up for debate. Um, but if anyone has ever met my kids, they would tell you like they're extremely fun and charismatic and like stubborn and brilliant and really um, mischievous. That's another word that parents use for bad, but when they discipline their kids a lot, they're like, you know, like mischievous, you know, they're veering them that way. And um, I have just so much fun. Like, I, I literally wanted to be a girl mom so bad. Like, cool. I'm just makeup and bows. You know, I, I had, like, bought girl clothes before I found out I was having a boy. Just <laughs> praying. I was like, come on, God. This is like, you know, it's like, this is like my fleece, you know, on the ground kind of thing. <laughs> had a boy. Then with my um, second pregnancy, I was like throwing up like crazy. I'm like, this is so different from my first. I must be having a girl. Oh, and I get in there and, you know, you're five months pregnant before you find out. They're like, it's a boy. I'm like, what? Oh, no. What? <laughs> and um, so my boys are like less than two years apart. So they're just like double trouble. And it's it's literally so much fun. And I, I have just such the privilege and the honor mm. of like shaping who they are and their worldview and what they think about God alongside my husband. And, um, it's, it's really a lot of fun and it's obviously a huge part of who I am, but I also, um, love snow cones and baked goods, coffee, love to bake. I'm so bad. Um, because I'm, I'm like really a healthy person. I'm always telling people like health and low sugar and I mean it like wholeheartedly. I'm like organic. And then I'm like, you know what I could have right now? We could have cupcakes. I could whip them up in like <laughs> seven minutes. I'm like, I mean, I'm like, we have to go to the store really quick because I need butter for buttercream. People are like, wait, didn't you just, didn't you just force us to eat Brussels sprouts and broccoli? And I'm like, Yes, but now we've had so much vegetables, we can have dessert. You know, this is great. I love that. Um, it's it's just terrible. It, this is why I'm complicated. I said that. It was the first thing I said. Um, and then I'm actually the wife of someone that's in the military. My husband's in the Coast Guard, so that's its own level of craziness and duty and being gone and, and lots of things like that. My husband actually doesn't deploy long term. So I'm very blessed in that nature. And then I'm also a business owner. Um I own a company called Everything That Church, and that's a little bit a part of my story, and we'll talk more about that here in the next um, few minutes. But that pretty much sums me up. So um, wow. if you if you meet me, we can we can share baked goods. I told you that. Once yes, before. you did. Pop yeah. tarts. It was pop yes, was pop yes, yes. I did. Uh, yeah, those were way too complicated yeah. though. So we we just need to buy the ones that are at Starbucks. <laughs> I've never bought one, but I wanted to. They're like. Have you seen them up at the counter? They're like yeah. homemade looking ones. Are they good? Looking, I haven't tried. I don't know. I haven't. Oh. So, so we, you and I share a love for Starbucks. So, um, I, I yes, know you posted one this morning on your, yes. on your story. Oh my so goodness. maybe so we'll share, share a pop tart if we, if we ever get I to that. love that so much. That's cool. Well, I'll be right there for baked goods as soon yes. as I'm done filming this story. I will be yes. driving your way. Yeah. You're like, is, I that love that. is it 16 hours? Yeah. yeah, no big deal. I could be there. No big deal. Well, I love that. That's awesome. Thanks for sharing bits and pieces of who you are. And let's just dive into your story because I am pumped for you to unpack this. So what's your yes. story? What has made you who you are today? Yes. So um, I told you that I'm complicated and I, <laughs> I mean it so much. And I feel like um, God just make certain people more complicated and hopefully it's for a reason. I believe that it is I'm, for my own children. I'm just claiming that right now, um, that the complicated people are, are, are going to make a difference, you know, but, um, becoming is an interesting thing because, 
you know, it means that you're in process. Mm -hmm. And I I personally, I I hate that. I really do. I'm a completionist, like to the core. It's like, Mm -hmm. I'm like, you know, I'm not someone that's like, Hey, let's, um, let's clean out the closets. And then I do like five. I'm like, we will go until 4 a.m., you know, but these closets will be done at the end. Um, And so, you know, to really be so humbled Mm -hmm. to constantly have to admit that you're in process. Mm -hmm. And when you change from one thing to the next, or when you change goals midway, like that's hard for someone that is a perfectionist or as a completionist. And I mean, I, I know that that's not every person, but that's a lot of women and men. Mm -hmm. Um, and, and yet becoming kind of gives this idea that like, despite your desires that you are not your own, that you are the Lord's, that he is going to bring things into your path and take them out of your path and that it's going to change you and grow you like being a boy mom. Mm -hmm. Um, and, and, and that sort of thing. And so interestingly, um, that like, I want to say like that leads up even to today, but we'll, we'll go back a little bit and I won't like make it too long, but I am the middle child of, um, two brothers that are both disabled and, um, a, a few people that know me actually do know my story. And, um, I was actually not going to start here, but it's so critical to the development of who I am. And, um, so at times I've shared it and I, it's funny because you asked me to do this and I'm, I have my own thing where people know me and I'm out in the public, but, um, it's not always personal. It's not always at this level, but I feel like it is crucial. And I feel like it's important for people to know it because a lot of people have gone through a lot of stuff that Mm -hmm. really sucks. And Mm -hmm. so from just like crazy chain of events, like my one brother environmentally was born, he wasn't breathing, um, for an extended period of time. And, um, so he has cerebral palsy, he's mentally normal, but he's bound to a wheelchair and he's a couple years older than me. So he's 35 or whatever. And that's been a really hard life for him. It's been a hard life in his own journey with God. And what do you believe about God's goodness when everything is bad? Um, And then below me is my younger brother and he's actually mentally disabled, um, but physically able. So he actually like takes the dart, which is like public transportation and does some stuff on his own. He's able to do some things, but he, he's not able to hold a job or things like that. And, um, we're actually less than two years apart, but I played like a very like parent figure, you know, to him growing up and even both, both of my brothers. And so, um, there was this like expectation of me always to just, perform and be ready and not, not play around my duty. My sense of duty was so strong and it had to be like, there was no other option, you know? And, and so uh, there's this funny story and I won't take too long, but my grandmother basically said when I was three that my mom had said to pack my suitcase and I had forgotten my underwear. And my mom was like, Stacia, like, honey, baby, you forgot your underwear. And my, my grandmother was like, Kimmy, that's my mom. Like she's three. And my mom was like, Oh yeah. Okay. Yeah. I'm like, we'll go to the store and buy you some, you know, because she just had this, this, you know, I, I I needed to be able to do it. And so I was able to do it, you know, that kind of thing. Hmm. And, um, and in a, in a large regard, like I would say that affected my performance and things that I did, but I also was very passionate. It wasn't just duty. I mean, I did the things that I did because I wanted to, um, but there was like a very, I want to say kind of, I felt like from God inside of me, but also expectation from outside of me to do something big, to make a difference, to like, that all this would have purpose that like, you know, this wouldn't be in vain. You know, these are the types of things that humans do just to like redeem situations that seem terrible. And, um, so like going through like high school and even into college, like I, I actually grew up, um, in the assemblies of God, it's just a denomination if you're not familiar with it, but, um, like we, the, the assemblies of God has something that they're really passionate about for their young people. And that's Mm -hmm. called fine arts. And basically there's all these different ways that you can partake in fine arts that kind of would propel people to do better works in ministry, but they're not all completely ministry related. And, um, when I was a senior in high school, I won short sermon nationally against like 
thousands and thousands and thousands of people, most of them boys. Um, and so people were like, Stacia, you know, like, <laughs> you know, that kind of thing. And um, you actually, you get a free year of tuition at an Assemblies of God school. And I, I was like, oh, I'm not using that. Like, I was just like so spitefully against it. It's just ridiculous. Um, and I ended up actually at the end switching um, because I had a free year of tuition just to like save costs. And I, and I did that. And it was weird. Like people were like, kind of like, being at an Assemblies of the God mm-hmm. school, I wasn't exactly in that bubble. People kind of like almost like knew me. It was like odd. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and there was this expectation, the same that went along with it, that I was going to like do something. And mm-hmm. I, I kind of like, I kind of loved it and I kind of hated it all at the same time. And I think a lot of times when we are becoming, there is that struggle. And so I was like, you know what? I'm just running away, people. You know, that was like, you know, I'm like, I'm going to do something completely different. And so after, despite like what I had pursued in my, Mm -hmm. um, like college degree and stuff like that, I actually was like, you know what, I want to just do something simple where no one will know me and I'll just make a tiny difference in the world and I'll just won't be known at all. And that's honestly like completely satisfying to a lot of people. But when people have like pointed you in a direction, Mm -hmm. that's complicated. You know, that doesn't exactly line up with even the things that you feel like God's put inside of you, but even through other people and that sort of thing. And so um, when I met my husband, who is a rescue swimmer in the Coast Guard, like I said, um, I was like, sure, like I I have to move and I don't have to establish myself in any place and no one can know me. And, oh, this is fantastic. I was like, (laughs) sign me up, baby. This is awesome, you know? (laughs) And so um, I married him and like, he is like a God-fearing, you know, man. It wasn't like something outside of that. Um, but I was like, I'm going to be a teacher and I'm just going to do what I want. And, um, I had this like sensation. It was, there's this song back 10 years ago or whatever. That was like a worship song that talked about like running from your calling. Mm. And it would like sometimes like play in my mind, um, these like words. And I like, I just hated it. I despised it. And I was like frustrated because I'm like, I've put all this work and now I'm a teacher and I'm good at this. And like, why is this not enough for me? And I'm impacting like lives and I'm like tangible way. I mean, there's people that are like bankers and construction workers that might not get to actually feel like they're making a difference. Like they might be providing for their family and they might be making a building, but you know what I mean? Here I am like teachers get to make a difference. And I was like, Oh, I just like was so like almost like agitated, but I couldn't like get the thought out of my head. And so, um, like despite having been like, very, very involved in my church and running, I mean, huge church running VBSs for them and doing big things. It was like, it was still, I I felt like incomplete. And, um, so I actually, when I moved, I took a job at a church and, um, a thriving church was, you know, making a big difference in our community and that sort of thing. And I, I quickly found that like being a woman was not an easy thing in ministry Mm -hmm. and especially being a woman that was not married to someone else that was in ministry Mm -hmm. I was like looked at like immediately like a threat like Mm -hmm. like a threat because it was like I was on my own kind Mm -hmm. of you know and I'm like yeah I have this covering and my husband but people didn't see it that way and interestingly my husband is like my biggest cheerleader. I mean, times 10, he's like, whatever you want, baby, like I'll support you. It's disgusting. Like he's amazing. He (laughs) makes dinner and you know, meets me at crazy places to pick up our kids and just a lot of things that a lot of husbands are not willing to do, but he just believes that that's part of his own story is to, you know, help me propel mine. He's living out his dream, you know, and at his job and that's it, you know, and that sort of thing. And so, um, I was like, I, I, I don't, I don't want to like go down the path too far, but I I just feel like women in ministry often struggle. They struggle Mm -hmm. because people were like, man, Stacia is able to do really awesome things, but she's a girl and her husband's not a pastor and you know, dot, 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 whatever that is. And um, so I I felt like I was doing the best that I could. And at the time I was having kids and stuff in it. So I was just being faithful, but I like had this just Mm -hmm. like sense of like, I'm supposed to be, doing more. That was like Mm -hmm. always there. And I know that not everyone struggles with that, but for however God wired me, that was, that was constantly there. And it's not just like the 
it's not just the, I need to do it because people said I would do it. It's because there's something inside of you that's, you know, pushing you that way. And, um, so as it turned out over time, it was like a lot of people at a lot of churches when they would need help started coming to me and they were like, I need help. I don't know where to start. I'm like, okay, well, let's X, Y, Z. And I would like churches started coming and visiting and I would send them packets of things I had created and how to replicate it and, you know, do these types of things. And, um, I like loved it. I found like a lot of satisfaction in it. I found even more satisfaction in empowering other people to do ministry than even in, in doing ministry myself, though I loved ministry. And so I kind of started to feel this like sense that like God was calling me to do something else and, um, in, in more in line with that. And so like little by little over time started just with different people that I was in ministry with saying, can we do this? If we all do this together, can we make something like this work? Um, and it's funny because in my becoming story, like there's kind of two even splits from that. There was still so much pushback that like Mm. I would be doing something alone, you know? And, and I feel like if you are, you know, 30 or under for a woman to be going off and doing something on her own, isn't it so crazy? But if you're 40 or 50 or 60 or 70, that is crazy, you know? And I, I, like I, I recognize that we all bring our biases to the Bible. We all bring our, our, we bring just the way that people have lived life for the last 500 years. Yeah. But I think that, um, one of the things that we say at everything about church where, where I work and, and, you know, do all that I do is like, people are waiting for the best of the church and the best of the culture to merge. Mm. And, and women is one of those places. People yeah. like people want women to actually be able to bring forth the dreams that God has put in their heart if you're from a younger generation, because they know that there's so much that can be done. Mm-hmm. Um, and so it, that, that was kind of that one angle. The other angle was, um, you know, like just pursuing something on your own, breaking into a field that's, that's, there's so much risk in that. I'm not really a risk taker. Remember, I don't like to be becoming, I like to be a, a completionist, but I, I just, it, it was like when all, like, you know, when everything I, I say sometimes is like all signs point to here when everything points to there, you just go, you know what, I guess I'm going to walk through that door. And I believe that, you know, God's going to be faithful. And if for some reason it doesn't work out, then I know that he taught me things for whatever is, is, you know, happening next. And so, um, just kind of just little by little started like working with more and more people and taking that risk and so now, um, at everything.church, we actually get to minister to all types of ministry leaders. And, um, I, I know I'm sure that there's tons that love us and tons that hate us, but it doesn't matter. We're just like, you know, being faithful to God in the ways that we feel like we're supposed to be. Yeah. And, um, it's been really cool. Like we actually, we, we launched a podcast. This was, uh, w- which Emily has been on and you have to check out our episode. Cause we yeah. actually kind of talk a tiny bit about this topic in its own regard. Um, if you're in ministry, at least you'll definitely benefit from it. But, um, we actually got featured by Apple and new and noteworthy for a long period of time. And we had like within, I mean, like a month, like hundreds of thousands of listeners. It was crazy. And granted, I think a lot of people just were like, what's this? They click on it. They don't know. Um, and then they're like, Oh, this is for ministry leaders. You know, they drop off. But out of that, we had just a lot of people that stuck with us and I was talking to someone this week and I was like, actually, I was like, I don't want to elaborate on this too much more. You can actually go back and listen to this podcast. This guy's talking about it and it's really powerful. And she's like, I already listened to that podcast. I'm like, you listen to our podcast? I was like, this lady's like, you know, as the, the pastor's life at a church and you don't even know. Like, I was just trying to kind of like offset a conversation. I was like, that's cool. Um, you know, so it, it is its own, it's its own cool thing. And I, I just feel like, um, one of the things that we stand by is that everybody in ministry deserves to have help that they can afford mm-hmm. to help them in their own becoming journey of yeah. whatever it is that they're doing at a church. And um, so, you know, we're just passionately coming alongside people and and helping to, to be more successful and awesome. really to have churches that are just growing and thriving because so many churches are shutting their doors and mm-hmm. shrinking. And there is so much about ministry that has to be done differently. That does start with some of your worldview perspectives and you have to right. just be willing to go, just because we've done this doesn't mean that this is right. You know what I mean? Sometimes okay. you have to shift just a tiny bit and say, you know, what is God up to that I might not have been viewing it in that way before? And so um, I guess that's pretty much where I am. And I wouldn't say that I have become by any means, but I, I feel like the most fulfilled and I feel like making an impact and 
training and leading and coming alongside other people. Like it's, it's funny. It's kind of like I'm teaching, but now I'm teaching adults instead of kids yeah. a little bit. And, and I love it. Like, I feel like, yeah. And I feel like I'm really good with kids and I don't just mean that like, you know, brag gadociously or something, but like, I feel like kids like, are like Miss Stacia! you know, like I can be silly with the best of them, but I just find so much more fulfillment mm-hmm. in the things that God's put inside me. And so that's where I'm at. And I'm definitely still in process and, um, that, you know, what all that we're doing is still growing. And, um, I, I'm excited though, to just continue down the path that I feel like, you know, God's laid out for me. Uh-huh. So that's incredible. Thanks yeah. for unpacking your story and journey. And for all of you watching, we'll have links for Everything Church and how you can connect um, in the posts here as well. So that way you can connect with Stacia and her team. Yes. Um, and so you can listen to the awesome podcast. Obviously. Yes. With Emily Becomings. Yeah. <laughs> I think I know that girl. But I, yeah. Maybe Florida something. I'm not sure. <laughs> I like that. But, you know, if we were sitting at Starbucks right now, sipping on some lattes, eating the Pop-Tarts, obviously, (laughs) um, what would you say to encourage another woman on her own becoming journey as she's in this process? Yeah. Well, I would actually say um, two things. My my one thought is um, it's about habits. And um, a couple years back, actually, this was like a tiny bit at the start of actually um, of everything got church. And that was basically like, I had this, this kind of like phrase on my mind and that's that, um, people, there, there's so much that we do out of habit and it's not even habits that we like. We were just in the habit of doing them. And, um, I, this is kind of in line of like life coaching, motivational, you know, kind of talk, but people that are doing the things that they want, people that are, are making the impact that they want, whether it's in church, business, fitness, health, parenting, they are working their butts off mm-hmm. and their habits are related to it. So, I mean, Emily is a perfect example of that, you, you know, herself, she's like constantly she's at the gym, she's leading other people in that way. She's like giving up of her free time to do all of her becoming stories. She's managing her time at her job. Like she is working alongside of her dad. I don't know how many of you guys know all the things that she does. I'm going to actually do her becoming <laughs> story soon. You guys don't know it. Um, <laughs> I love it. But, but, um, habits are so critical. So I was at the hairdresser recently and I'm talking to the girl and she was like, I struggle with doing the things that I want to. And I like struggle with boredom, but laziness. And I said, a lot of the things that like, I don't want to do, but I know that are necessary. It was like, they are on my calendar. I was like, and then I set an alarm. Yeah. I was, I said, so like, I, I really struggle with going to bed on time. I go to bed like at one in the morning. I would too. I mean, it, I mean it's so late. It's ridiculous. I'm a night owl, but like, I know that to be a good mom that has to be up at six 30 in the morning, I have to go to bed by 1130. So my alarm goes off to go to bed mm-hmm. at 1130. And it's like, okay, you're, you know what I mean? It's mm-hmm. like, that's a habit that I need in my life that then I need reminders to try to do it. And, and the same goes for like I, when I work out, like I actually schedule it on my calendar that on Tuesdays and Fridays, I go to yoga because if not, who wants to work out? Like no one, you know what I mean? Right. But you, you just don't. And if you have any doubt in your mind, if there's one doubt, if there's any reason, like your kids, that, Thing that you had to pick up at the store, you won't do it. You know what I mean? You have to have committed already, you know, in a, in a fairly concrete way to be able to do things that have progress and have success. And I know people, I, I just was reading a blog from a girl that I know, um, in, in North Carolina that was like, I have the same hours and the day is Beyonce. And here I am like, look at all that I'm accomplishing. Well, yeah, Beyonce probably has six people that are helping her, you right. know, do the things. But Beyonce is probably extremely self-disciplined. You know, she probably gets up at 445 and doesn't complain because she knows that she has to go get her makeup to go do whatever, to be somewhere at 6 a.m. Right. Like, and, and, and it does just come down to habits. If you want to see something different in your life, it starts there no matter what it is, whether it's serving at your church, whether it's reading your Bible more, whether it's being a better mom, like I, in line with that, like I, I commit to laying in my kids' beds only two nights a week. I'm not going to do it every night of the week because we have a lot of stuff going on, but I, my kids know on their night that they get special one-on-one attention and it's, it's a habit. It's on the schedule. And I just cannot say how important that is. And, and then the other is like kind of about dreaming. Um, it's like when you believe that you were created to more, it is terrifying. Hmm. And 
And I actually think that if you try something, you'll probably fail. (laughs) I mean, you probably will. I know that even in our own efforts of the things that we've done, a lot of things that we've tried to do have failed. Now, some things have not, but not everyone has always the bandwidth or the cash to take those fails. Um, And I, I know that that all plays in, but you're not going to get to even see if it's going to work out unless you try. And um, you do need people around you, support people. And sometimes you actually need to, like, if you're, let's say you're at a church, sometimes you have to hire someone. Sometimes, you know, that, like, I know that I, I'm not a life coach or something. I know it, people are like, oh, that's a gimmick. But like, it's someone that they're accountable to that says every week, like, did you write on your blog? Did you right. do this? Did you do that? Did you call your customers? And they're like, oh, okay. You know what I mean? And I think that, um, if you have a dream in your heart to do something more than what you're doing, then get a plan. Don't just have an idea. Don't be haphazard. Google it, research it, find out what the other people are doing. Take those $179 classes that say that they'll tell you how to do it. Try to find out everything you can and and do it because we only have one life that we live. We only have one life to show to our kids. We only have one life to show to our peers, you know, the, that we've lived our life to the fullest that, you know, God has created us to do. So. Oh, that's so good. I love, I love it. Habits and dreaming, AKA failing, but go forward, do yeah. it. Um, Cause it's true. Like we only have one life and it's not a dress rehearsal. Um, yeah. So we don't get a yeah. do um, Yeah. I, I wish I did. I actually, there's a, like, I have a few, like on my timeline times that I would go back 17 is one, um, you know, <laughs> but at the same time, every time that you fail, like you yeah. have so much knowledge. I mean, yeah. so much knowledge. There's so much knowledge in failure. It's sad. I wish there was less knowledge in failure, <laughs> um, but there is, and, and there's a reason for that. And that's so that you can yep. move up, you know, forward and, and do the things Absolutely. That God's that's created so you to do. Good. So. Oh, drop the mic now. Boom. Yeah. Girl, you rocked Boom. it. <laughs> exactly. You, what we'll do here is we'll get my Bitmoji, you know, the one with the mic drop and then you can yes. just like, you can place her right there. Yes. <laughs> that is perfect. I love it so much. Girl, you rock. Like, thank you for taking the time to unpack your story and your journey of becoming the process that you're embracing. Yes. Process. Um, yes. It's a big deal. It's a yeah. very big deal. Well, I appreciate the opportunity. Literally guys, I, I, I just can't even say enough about Emily. Like she's just so driven and determined and um, faithful, despite I know all that it takes of her and requires from from you um, to do this. And so if you guys benefit from this, I hope that you let her know when you send her emails and text messages, because it goes a long way, you know, when people are, are on their own journey. So well, I, I appreciate that. That means the world. So thank you so much. And seriously, for everybody following, um, you need to follow Stacia and everything that church, like for real, you will benefit so much. I, I actually don't post as much as I should, but, um, but I try, you know, <laughs> every once in a while you'll, you'll get this, like, uh, you'll get a gem. And, yes. Yeah, yes. A cupcake. And you'll be like, Stacia, I'm coming over. So you can yes. get some for me. <laughs> yes. So, but, um, but you are incredible. You inspire me. And, and I just appreciate you being a part of becoming me.tv. So thank yes. you. Thank you. You guys have a good one.